So today's episode is being filmed in our warehouse because it's about inventory. And for those of you who are just joining us, so far, we've bought this brand commodity. I've flown to London. We had our team reveal, our office reveal, where we showed all our current team members that we had bought this brand. I feel like I had a baby. We had a boy. So today we're gonna to talk about inventory and what I had to go through to secure whatever was remaining of the inventory of commodity before or right after I closed on the brand. My main focus when I was buying the brand was two things. One was making sure that I had the intellectual property, right? The trademarks and the design and so on. And the second most important thing was the inventory. You have two types of inventory. You have raw materials and you have finished goods. So raw materials are all the components that go into making a product, right? The cap, the bottle, here I'll show you. So the cap, the bottle, the pump, all of these individual components that come together to make a product. Now, in the case of commodity, there was the old bottle, there was the old cap. When I say old, the one that you know as the regular bottle, the regular cap. And then they had gone through, or they were going through, a redesign and a rebranding with our team, uh, Ico, in, in, in England, where they had produced new bottles, and new pumps, and all new components. We also had finished goods. These are products that are sellable, that were available in a warehouse in, in New York State somewhere. And there was, and a whole assortment of products that were available that we were trying to get as well. Normally when you buy a brand, you have a due diligence period. This is the period where you can go inspect inventory, make sure what you're buying is what you're buying and what you're getting. Once we closed, I had heard that this raw material warehouse in New Jersey wasn't letting people in, they were blocking them, that the goods were disappeared, they were all damaged. So we didn't even know if we can get in. It was a bit unusual because I had this thing in my head that we're gonna go there and there's gonna be nothing there. Remember, for me to, to buy something and pay for it, I have to have something to sell so I can make money. So I'm buying all these things sight unseen and hoping that it's there after we close. So as soon as we closed, the first thing we did was go to the warehouse that had the raw material components. We went there not knowing what to expect. They gave us an appointment. We went not knowing if we'd actually get in, not knowing if we got there, the goods would be there. If the goods were there, not knowing if it'd be in decent condition or not. Oh, look, whiskey. And, and there's gold. And there's a gift set. Well, there's three pieces we found. I hear footsteps. I'm Vicken. I'm here to check the commodity products. How do I look with this hat? Is it good? Does it go with my skin complexion? <laughs> we got there, lights went on, all the, all the stuff was there. We inspected all the goods, everything seemed to be there. I really didn't understand what all the smoke and mirrors was about while I was negotiating for the brand. So that really tells you, do a lot of due diligence, but really be cautious about what people are telling you during this period because a lot of it could just be misinformation. To, to steer you in the wrong direction or in somebody else's favor. We managed to get all our inventory from the raw materials in New Jersey. The guys in France were very nice. They managed to give us all the inventory there. We went and picked up our own raw materials, or finished goods rather, from, from New York State, and we brought everything here. And now we're in the process of going through everything, uh, deciding what we're gonna use, and that's a real battle in itself because we have this money in samples and products and components some of them are useless, some of them are useful, and we have to really decide what, what to do next. Certain inventory has different values to different people. So while everyone told me make sure the bottles are in good, good, good condition or the caps are in good condition, my interest actually was the samples and all of the free stuff that normally is given away in promoting a brand because there was a lot of it. And that's very, very costly. The lesson here is really understand what's important for you, which, which is what I did, and really look for that in a deal. Don't try to grab everything. We're gonna see what there is from the original designs. We're going to make sure everyone's happy, and we're gonna redesign over the next five or six months and come out sometime in June with, with whatever the new reveal is of the Commodity 2.0, basically. What's really important at the moment is to get our email subscriber list as big as possible 
because that's how we're really utilizing the interaction between, between you and us. I would love to be able to show two things and say, which one do you guys prefer? Or to send samples to everyone of two fragrances that we're looking to develop, two new fragrances, and say, what do you guys want? Really, whoever's interested to be part of the journey and be part of the decision-making process, sign up to the newsletter, please. Um, and once we get to 50,000, there is a big surprise, which I can't announce quite yet, but once we get to that number, there's gonna be a really interesting surprise that I think everyone will really, really enjoy.